Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs, and today is lesson number 12, and we are going to be discussing what actually causes thyroid disease. And I've got a bunch of uh, different images here that we're going to be discussing and using, and I also want to focus part of this talk on the difference between what I'm calling thyroid dysfunction and hypothyroidism, which are really two distinct and separate uh, issues and, and entities. And which one you have actually matters because it determines how you treat. And so let, let's talk about that. Let's, we'll start this discussion by talking about why does it matter what causes thyroid disease? So this approach is what a lot of conventional doctors do. And, and this, is, this is why it matters. So if you go to a conventional doctor, they're really looking to identify the name of a disease process that you have. So if you come in and you're feeling down, they want to slap on the label of depression. If you come in and you're fatigued and you're having constipation, they want to slap on the label of hypothyroidism. And they do this because once they have a name, they can then prescribe treatment. And then they can kind of wash their hands clean and say, you know, you're on your way, you know, feel better. But the problem with that is you miss a lot of conditions that are potentially reversible. Meaning, wouldn't it be better if you could just stop the disease from progressing and reverse it, as opposed to just masking it or treating it with a medication? And the answer to that is obviously yes. So that's why we really care. So number one, we might be able to reverse it if we can. And number two, we can target our treatment a little bit better to whatever it is that we, we think is going on. And then we can stop doing whatever that thing is if it's within our power to do so. So that's why it matters. So furthering on the discussion, let's. I want to talk about the difference between what I call thyroid dysfunction and hypothyroidism. So we'll, we'll talk about each of these separately and talk about what causes them. And I got a bunch of images we're going to be going through here. Uh, so sit tight for a sec. Um, so let's talk about thyroid dysfunction. So I, I titled this, this is a different entity than hypothyroidism. And thyroid dysfunction refers to the, the, a condition in which your thyroid hormone is not working properly at the cellular level um, or you're not able to, con to convert it very well. But this is different than not being able to produce it at all. So you're still, your thyroid gland right here in this image is still producing T4 and T3, but you're having problems using that T3 at the cellular level. Remember, it must be convert, T4 is gonna be produced by the thyroid gland. We'll go over here to, to illustrate this. T4 is produced, it's turned into T3, and then once you have T3, T3 must get into the cells and, and activate transcription and change the genetics. So you might be able to produce enough thyroid hormone but if that thyroid hormone is not active in your cells, then you're still going to have symptoms. And so this is this this entity is what I call thyroid dysfunction. Now the good news is thyroid dysfunction is re almost always reversible, not always, but usually, and uh, it can be differentiated from hypothyroidism, which is a just a complete reduction in the your body's ability to produce thyroid hormone. Um, and so we'll talk about the the similarities in just a minute here. But let's talk about what causes these type of issues. And I'm going to go through a list here, so just sit tight. But I would say the first and probably foremost and most common cause of thyroid dysfunction, you know, remembering your body's ability to not properly utilize thyroid hormone, is obesity. So just mean just having as little as 10 pounds extra body weight on your body limits your ability to actually use thyroid hormone appropriately. And this is this is this is how people get into that that sort of uh, cycle where they say, I can't lose weight. I'm, or I'm overweight and I, I think I have a thyroid problem because I'm overweight. Actually, there's a lot of truth to that because obesity causes an inflammatory state which dysregulates the way that your body converts T4 to T3 and can cause a lot of issues. Now, it doesn't mean that all obese people have thyroid issues, but it, a lot of them do. And it's because obesity causes that issue. It's not the other way around, although it can be. Uh, so that's a big one. Another big one is calorie-restricted diets or just dieting in general. So just reducing your calories below whatever the amount that your body wants to produce naturally and keeping it there or sustaining it for 21 days is enough to reduce your metabolism and, and reduce the amount that you convert. Nutrient deficiencies also play a big role in this. So that would be number three, uh, especially zinc and selenium and even iodine. Iodine will make an appearance when we talk about your body's ability to produce thyroid hormone as well. But deficiencies in any of these will, will make it so that this conversion process and the amount that your body produces is going to be limited. Another big one is insulin resistance um, and leptin resistance. So you can see the connection between your TSH and insulin resistance and it just goes in a vicious cycle. So these conditions such as pre-diabetes or diabetes will also limit your body's ability to use thyroid hormone 
appropriately. Chronic illness and chronic infections also do this. So uh, chronic illnesses such as high blood pressure, chronic back pain, fibromyalgia, high cholesterol, heart disease, all of these things put strain on your body and they limit your body's ability to use thyroid hormone. Uh, another really big one uh, going down this list is prescription medications. I don't have a full list here, but a ton of prescription medications actually limit thyroid function in your body. So I'll give you a couple uh, lists here. So beta blockers, diabetic medications, uh, anti-seizure medications, narcotics are a big one, so pain medicines, antidepressants, and certain heart medications. But these things, a lot of people are on these medications and they all might be interfering with how your body uses thyroid hormone. Another one is inflammatory states. So I, I put into here anything that causes inflammation, but specifically gut dysfunction, yeast and fungal overgrowth, things like that will limit your body's ability to produce thyroid hormone or limit your body's ability to utilize thyroid hormone, I should say. So that th those conditions all cause what I am referring to as thyroid dysfunction. Now let's talk about hypothyroidism, which is a completely different entity. So hypothyroidism is, is the where your body has trouble producing the thyroid hormones. So they may be able to be utilized, but they're, but they're not being produced in sufficient amounts. And the problem is both hypothyroidism and thyroid dysfunction cause the same set of symptoms. But thyroid dysfunction is almost always reversible, whereas hypothyroidism may or may not. So let's talk about those causes of hypothyroidism, which result in your body not able to produce enough of the thyroid hormone. Remember, T4 and T3 is what we're talking about. So number one would be Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We talked about that the other day, and there's a lot of causes of Hashimoto, so I'm not going to go over those. But remember, stress, infections, gut dysfunction, etc. There's a lot of a lot of issues that trigger the autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's, and then your body destroys its own thyroid gland. And then if you're destroying your own thyroid gland, obviously you're not going to be able to produce enough thyroid hormone. Another big cause is the treatment for hyperthyroidism. Patients with hyperthyroidism usually have their thyroid destroyed by radioactive iodine or completely removed. And if you remove your thyroid, thyroid gland, obviously you're going to have some issues with producing the thyroid hormone because you're reliant upon taking thyroid medication. Another big one would be pituitary or hypothalamic issues. So here's the hypothalamus in this image and here's the pituitary. So if your body's not sending the right signals to the thyroid gland, then obviously the amount that you produce is going to be low. Now these are not very common, but they're also not necessarily reversible. So imagine if you had some sort of trauma, like a car accident that damaged your hypothalamus or pituitary, that may not be reversible, okay? But if you're like, th if you have thyroid dysfunction and you're just constantly on a diet, well, you can stop dieting and you can fix that problem, right? So these things are, that's how they differ. Um, another big issue is iodine deficiency, which causes hypothyroidism. So remember, iodine deficiency can cause goiters, and goiters is when your thyroid enlarges and gets really big and it can't produce very well. Another one is pregnancy and lactation. So when you are pregnant or you're breastfeeding, your body has an increased demand on thyroid hormones. So even though you're producing enough for you, you might not be producing enough for both you and your baby or your child. And then, of course, the last one here is that it could be congenital. So on this list, you could just be born without a thyroid or, or have an issue in that way. So let's go briefly back over why this matters. So remember, thyroid disease and thyroid dysfunction may be reversible. So that's the things like you're overweight or you're, you're reducing your calories or you're nutri you don't have enough nutrients or you have insulin resistance. All of those things you can address. So you can change your diet. You can try and lose weight. You can start eating enough calories for your body. You can take certain supplements. Those are reversible. But when we talk about hypothyroidism, meaning you don't produce enough thyroid hormone, some of those may or may not be. So for instance, if you have trauma and you damage your pituitary, eh, you may or may not. If you're born without a thyroid, you're kind of, you know, you're out of luck in that sense. You, you can't regrow your thyroid back, at least not yet. So some of those, th that's why it matters. If, if you know what's causing the dysfunction versus the hypothyroidism, you can target that treatment. Now, here's the issue. Both of these conditions may present with similar lab tests. So both might result in high TSH or low free T3 or low free T4 or high reverse T3. Now, both conditions do this. So, so it's going to be up to you to determine the differences between the two. And if you can't, I mean, obviously, you, you'll be able to tell, like, if you have Hashimoto's, you can order certain tests to determine if that's the case. And if you know that, that your thyroid symptoms didn't start until you started gaining weight, well, that's a good sign that it may be related to dysfunction and not due to hypothyroidism. And here's the other thing, both may benefit from thyroid medication, but those with hypothyroidism may need it for longer periods versus those with thyroid dysfunction may just be able to use it temporarily. So you might be able to use it for three to six months, fix the issues that you're dealing with, like lose some weight and 
reverse insulin resistance, fix your leptin resistance, and then you can t take yourself off of that thyroid medication as you start to feel better. So those are the main differences and the, the main causes of thyroid dysfunction and hypothyroidism. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to those. So remember, this, this was all about the causes of thyroid disease and specifically we focus on the difference between thyroid dysfunction and hypothyroidism. So that's pretty much it and I'll see you guys in the next one.